Yes, yes. Okay, I, I said we would um, we, we, we would look into. Um, can anybody remind me what we what I said we would look into, or, or did you promptly all forget? <laughs> Psalm <laughs> Psalms forty. Psalm what? Forty, I believe it was. And uh, which was quoted from Hebrews nine nine, I think. Or quoted in Hebrews nine nine. Which other psalm? I told you there were two psalms we we're going to look at. Oh, uh, twin. I wouldn't guess it's twenty something, but I wouldn't guess. Maybe. Well, who, uh, was was Tim the only person in church? Somebody Tim. else help. <laughs> Somebody else, you know. Help. Okay, I, I, it was Psalm 16. Oh. Psalm 16. Okay. So obviously, if you can't remember the Psalm, that means you didn't do the homework. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if people cannot even remember what Psalm it was. <laughs> Pastor, did you say that last week? Yes. And oh, the week Lord. before, Sister Abner. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's 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 start. Did any did anybody do it by by any chance? Anybody? Nobody. Okay. All right. Let let let's go to Psalm sixteen. Let's um, um, it's Bible study study. So I'm not going to just be reeling off. You know, I think we have we have gone past that stage now. Uh, if you are here, you are here because you want to learn and you want to teach and you want to, you are, you are apt to teach, you are teachable and you are a teacher. So let's, let's, um, okay, so let, let's, let's, let's read it, Psalm 16, um, reading from the KJV. It, it, the, the headline is, you will not abandon my soul, okay? And then it's called a meek term of David. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee. But to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings, offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places, yea. I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh, my flesh also, also, sorry, my flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. So let's let's start to talk. You you will all on you will unmute and you will talk. We're going to talk. So let's talk. What what do you get? If you have any questions, if something arises that you don't understand, let's talk about it. If you have any revelation, any understanding, let's talk.
What's a mixed term? Okay, that's good. Um, the the Brown Driver Briggs definition says a technical term found in some titles. The meaning is uncertain. Um, and Strong says an engraving that is technically a poem. So I think that's. Um, A poem. Okay. okay. I'm looking at the N N N L T version, and it says this may be a literary ring or musical term. That's music yeah. term. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, it, it, it has to do with it, 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 it's, it's a literary or technical term. It's a it's a it's a it may be a poem or something. Uh, so <coughs> I don't think it's critical to the yeah, meaning. It's not that significant by the sounds of it. Yeah. It it would it was probably an instruction for the people who were going to play it or read it or something and they would know what it was but it's not it's not significant okay all right so shall we move on yep yes, so first question i mean the simple question uh, that we always ask ourselves when we when we approach a text who is talking to whom is he talking what is he talking about? So who is talking? I'll say to this. whom is he talking? What is he talking about? Okay. So you you would say David. Okay. Does anybody have a, a, a different opinion? The aspects of it that points to Christ um, when it talks about um, not um, verse 10 it says we will not leave my soul in hell nor without suffering the only one to see corruption I believe that Christ talking at that point or at least being referred to Could it be more okay. than one person? Possibly. Could it be more than one person? How does that how does that work? That maybe it was David and then it switches to Christ. <laughs> Pastor. How did, how did it how does that work? The the look on your face even says that's not even a close guess. So let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm I am i not I'm not um, I, I'm I'm just trying to figure out how does it work. Was it that like David was somewhere, was started talking, then Christ pushed him out and started talking, or what? What I don't know which what? which which uh, psalm. I, I do remember there's another psalm like that where the the, the subject seems to then change midway through, uh, perhaps because somebody's being quoted or not. So that that was actually the reason why I was I was making that suggestion because it seemed to happen close to where Pastor. There, there are quite a few quotations anyway, so it, it was just a pure guess. Okay. Fine, thanks. Thanks, Pro Tim. Um, thanks for at least helping us to look at another possibility. All right, anybody else? Anybody else got anything they want to add? A comment or they want to in 
interpret or something. Pastor, it's probably not the, the topic of this evening's discussion, right? But looking at Psalm 16, Psalm 16, 6 is one that we quote a lot. And I, I didn't read this psalm. I, I read uh, 40, but I didn't read this particular one. So I'm only just, once again, just just guessing here. But it it's one that I, I think we quote, and I'm not really sure the context. So it would be interesting to actually now understand this verse six in the context of the context of the entire psalm in itself okay so let, that's good thanks and we, we, we do quote it quite a lot the lines are falling for me let's some places and i have it let, let's first of all find out what exactly that means mm -hmm. um, the Bible in basic English says, fair are the places marked out for me. I have a noble heritage. You see, Evie says, you make my life pleasant and my future is bright. The ERV says, my share is wonderful. My inheritance is very beautiful. The Good News Bible says, how wonderful are your gifts to me? How good they are. And God's word says, your boundary lines mark out pleasant places for me. Yeah. Indeed, my inheritance is something beautiful. And then TPT says, your pleasant path leads me to pleasant places. I'm overwhelmed by the privileges that come with following you, for you have given me the best. Okay, any, any, any other translation somebody, anybody wants to add to these ones? The um, New Living Translation is, the land you have given me is a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. Okay, all right. So do all these translations help us to understand that line better? Does it do? Are we do we have a better understanding? I, yeah, I, I think my my understanding just went up by at least ten times because, yeah, as I said, we, we quote it quite a lot, but I didn't realize that the lines were so the penultimate translation that you read, I think it was God's word, and I looked at the um, the KJV plus as well to see what the lines meant and the lines. It says it's a rope, especially a measuring line uh, by implication a district or inheritance. So what I now understand by that is, is that the lines are the, the, the demarcation of, of a plot or a territory or something that then becomes one's heritage. I, I think that's what I'm now understanding from it. Yes, yes. So it's saying that your, your, your heritage, your boundary lines mark out pleasant places. God has given you a pleasant inheritance. Amen. Uh, so it would be, it looks like it is both a physical and a spiritual uh, demarcation of, of, of pleasant, or, or a pleasant uh, plot, you know. <laughs> I have a goodly heritage, yes. Okay, really beautiful. Okay, well, great. So that helps us put it into its context, right? So now let's look at the, let's now. So we come back to the question. <laughs> uh, Gerard, I like the way your hand is on your head, like. <laughs> uh, that this one, I don't. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> David speaking, it's David. That's <laughs> okay, all right, now. Let, let's, um, how many of you have heard this phrase, a messianic psalm? Yeah. Okay. What, oh, what are your thoughts on, how much what are your thoughts on that you. phrase, the messianic psalm? A psalm that's talking about Christ. Okay. All right. Yes. That's, that's what it means. Yes. That is, is pointing to Christ. Okay. Or 
or reflecting Christ, which is, so it's maybe like, it's almost like a, a, a symbol, an image, you know? Mm. Uh, okay. So what are your thoughts when you hear that phrase, a messianic son? Because now, there are some, there are some some that are very obviously, you know, like we, we, we studied a few weeks ago, Psalm 22, when we talked about how it is, it, it was talking about a crucifixion before even crucifixion was a thing. Sorry, somebody started to speak and I, I, I cut them off. I'm sorry. So it was me, and uh, thank you for the pronunciation, because I've always thought it as messianic. But anytime I think of that word, I think of the Jews. So I was thinking this psalm has something to either something to do with the Jews then, before Christ came. It's, it's just my little mind. So I'm not sure if I'm correct. Okay. Or is it is any way connected? No, to the, it? The, the word messianic is from the word messiah. All right. Me is messianic. It's it's. It's that means it's a, it's it points to Christ. So it, it's it, no, it's not it's actually the very opposite of being Jewish. It's the uh -huh. so when you hear Messianic Jews, what you what you're saying is that there are Jews who believe in Jesus Christ. Oh wow! As okay. as Lord, that's what Messianic means. So um, so it, it actually has it's it is the very opposite of Judaism or being a Jew. Mm. It's actually it, it's, it's Christianity. It's Christ. It's Christ. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. So I think we've settled that. So, yes. So I, I asked the question. I said, what are your thoughts on that phrase, a messianic psalm? They're not psalms that are pointing to the coming of Christ. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's what it means. But I'm asking, what are your thoughts? What do you think about that statement? It's almost like Jesus is talking, but his son is talking on his behalf. I, I can't, you know, it's almost like he's actually the one talking, but then again, somebody is saying what he would have said, basically almost reporting him verbatim. That, that's the kind of impression I get. All right, fair enough. Yes, yes. Okay. We'll, we'll, come, and, we'll come and explore that a little mm -hmm. deeper. All right. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm still trying to, to see wh what your thoughts are, whether you, you all agree oh, that no, there no, is no, something like a messianic psalm. Because there are some psalms that are obviously, they, 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 like I said, like Psalm 22 is so obviously talking about Jesus because it, 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 does, it, it is almost a, a narrative. In fact, it is a narrative of the cross. So, okay. Um. Um, for me, um, yeah. okay, let me just say this. Um, the scriptures actually testify about Jesus even before um, we knew him as Christ. Scriptures always talked about him. So it's like um, a confirmation of what is to be. Okay. I, I'm, even I'm before, listening. even before Jesus, even before Jesus came as we know him, as we knew him, scriptures already testified about him. Okay. So even when he spoke, when he spoke in the New Testament, he was always kind of confirming the old, what was said about him, even before we knew him as Christ. Okay. So this is one of those um, Psalms. Okay. Thank you so much, Sister Doris. That's, that's really, really powerful. That's powerful. That is, that's very insightful. Okay. All right. Let's. Let's, this is a scripture uh, you hear me talk about all the time. Uh, but I, it's, the reason I talk about it all the time is because it is so central. It has to be central to what we believe and how we operate and how we read our scriptures. Okay, so let's go to Luke chapter 24. 
Now, this is um, two disciples are on the road to Emmaus. They are, um, they, they, they are, and they're talking about the, the things that have happened in Jerusalem, the death of Jesus, uh, how, you know, they're all devastated. You could see that they were, they were on the verge of depression. They were devastated. And uh, they were they were sad. How do I know? Because Jesus said, "As you walk, and are sad." And so they were they were very sad. Uh, and so Jesus pulled up beside them and started walking with them. And then he asked them a question. He said, "What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad?" Okay, so you can see that I didn't make it up when I said they were sad. Okay, Jesus could, you know, he said it. And the one of them whose name was Cleopas answered and said unto him, are you only a stranger in Jerusalem and has not known the things which have come to pass there in these days? <laughs> it's interesting. He's talking to the only person who actually knows what has happened. <laughs> because everybody else, nobody else knew what had happened. You see, they saw physical things but they did not understand the spiritual implications. Nobody knew what had happened. On, the only person who knew was the person who was walking beside them. So they saw physical things. So he is now coming in. So he asked them, he said, what things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet. You see, they are now talking about him in past tense. <laughs> mighty in word and deed before God and all the people. So they recognize that. Now, notice that these are disciples. They are not thinking of Jesus as the Christ anymore. Remember when Jesus asked, who do men say that I am? Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And most of them had testified to that. That's why they were disciples. They testified that he was the Christ, the son of the living God. But after this very traumatic events that had happened, they now, they reverted to seeing him as a prophet. They said he's, he was a prophet, okay? Mighty in word and deed. So he was a mighty prophet. They, they, they'd gone back. May we never go back in Jesus' name. May we never go back on the revelation of Christ as the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. And somebody said amen to that. Mm -hmm. And somebody said amen to that. Amen. 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 <laughs> You guys are not going to get away with just switching your phone, your mic off, and just let, letting me be talking to myself. Okay. And they said concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet. I'm in verse 19, Luke 24, 19. Uh, concerning Jesus, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Verse 21. But we trusted, so we no longer trust. Okay, so you can see that a transition has taken place in their faith, in their belief system, because of the death of Jesus Christ. We trusted that it should have been he which should have redeemed Israel. So obviously, it wasn't he. He's not redeeming Israel. All that was, we were mistaken in that trust. He's dead, he's gone. It, it was just one of the prophets. It was another of the prophets. That's what they're saying here. Okay. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished. They're, they're, they're coming to make us shocked. Which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. So as far as they're concerned, these women are just, we don't know what, they've, they've had, what, what they had for breakfast, uh, what, what was mingled with it, but, you know. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so, as the women had said, but him they saw not. Now, this is Jesus speaking now, verse 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all 
that the prophets have spoken. All that the prophets have spoken. So what have the prophets spoken? And what is it that the, these people were to believe that they did not believe? Okay. Verse 26. So this is what the prophets have spoken that the believers did not believe. They had not believed it. Okay. Verse 26. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? So the prophets had prophesied that Jesus would suffer and enter into his glory. That's the message of Christ, that he would suffer and enter into his glory. Now look at verse 27. Please, please, please. This is, this is where it gets interesting. Verse 27. We've gone over this a thousand times. Sorry if, it's, if, if you, are, you are not happy about the fact that pastor keeps repeating things. But I asked you the questions because I thought you got it. But you, no, nobody was able to answer the question that I asked. So that's why we're going back over it again. So please don't tune off. Don't say, oh God, here we go again. Ah, oh, we've heard this before. Ah, oh, oh, something. Oh. Why, why won't Pastor preach something new and exciting? You know? Oh, you know? Pastor, we're not, doing, we're not doing any of that. Oh, praise God. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite one is when he says that. <laughs> <laughs> You have to hear something about eight times for the thing to sink in. So, yeah, that's what the teachers tell us. They, it, it has to be, you have to hear it eight times before it sinks in. And they, they say that when you hear a message like on a Sunday, that after a few hours, you will remember about four or five things from that message, just four or five points from that message. By the next day or the next week, you will only remember one or two things. One mm -hmm. or two. So if that's reading, even for the Shabrino. <laughs> so if you really, really want something to sink in, I, I probably have to preach it the same thing about five, eight times before you get before you get it. So, uh, but that's another day's message. So he says, verse twenty-seven, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets. Now, where does Moses begin? Please help me, somebody. Genesis. Genesis. Where does the last prophet end? Malachi. 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 Okay. Very good. It's interesting. In, in the Hebrew, it's Malachi. But it's okay. If we, if we call it Malachi, they will drive us out of church. So, <laughs> <laughs> Malachi. <laughs> so, uh, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded. He he explained unto them in all the scriptures. So in all the scriptures, going from Genesis to Malachi, uh, he explained the things concerning himself. So that means if Jesus, uh, that, that's a Bible study I would have liked to be at. That means he, he started, he looked at in the beginning, God created the help and showed them. Then by the time he got to Leviticus uh, and he was taking the, the, all the sacrifices, he showed them. Then by the time he got to uh, Nehemiah building the walls, he showed them. By the time he got to, then by the time he got to uh, Malachi, the son of righteousness arising with healing his week, he showed them all the things concerning himself. That means, now somebody help me. Psalm 1. If Jesus were going to explain Psalm 1, what, 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 would, what, what would he have showed them? No, I'm not saying we should go into the Psalm. I just said, just the from writer. what he just said. No, just the from... Writer. No, no, no. I, I don't want you to go into the Psalm. I don't want you to go. I just, I, I'm just talking of the, the, the general... From what we have just read here, what would Jesus be showing 
the disciples if he took someone i'm not saying go to someone don't go to someone i'm just asking mm -hmm. what would he have shown the people in someone show them about himself how someone relates to christ mm -hmm. yeah so if he went to some two what would he show them the same how some two mm -hmm. po to point, them, point them to him yeah and if he went to some 13 what would he show them same thing same thing same thing. Psalm 16. Him. All right. Psalm All the way to Psalm 150. So, do you see why I have a problem with calling a psalm a messianic psalm? Right. Because oh. all the psalms are messianic. Absolutely. The whole Bible is messianic. The whole, the whole mm. thing points to Christ. Now, some point more obviously than others, some point more clearly than others. Some are more, some any child can see it that there's Christ there. Others, you have to you have to dig a little bit deep, deeper because it's not on the surface. You know, gold, you don't find gold on the surface. Mm -hmm. You don't find precious stones on the surface. So there are some things you see on the surface. So it's obvious you can see that, oh, this one obviously is Christ. Psalm 22, for example, and this Psalm 16, those parts of it where it talks that we not leave my soul in hell, you not suffer, you only want to see corruption. It is very obvious that this is Christ. But if you go to the other ones where it's not quite so obvious, if Christ were to take you on a Bible study, he would show you how those Psalms relate to him. How do I know that? Church, somebody please help me. How do I know that? You said it. It's all about him. Please tell, show me that. Please show me from the scriptures. I, I, I don't want. Show me. No, we just read in verse twenty-seven. Yes, in Luke. Just read it. Okay, verse twenty-seven. Verse 20. Very good. Somebody read it for me, please. Read it. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Okay, so mm -hmm. you can see, I, I, I'm doing this purposely so that you don't think that. Pastor O's own is too much. You know, why? Uh -uh. So, Psalm too long, long. You want to make put Jesus into some Psalms that is not. Okay, what about those Psalms where, where the people are obviously talking about themselves being sinners? Where he say, I, 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 I sinned and I, I, and I did this. Uh, or like Psalm 50, or is it 51 where David is, is, is confessing his sin? How can we see Jesus in that when Jesus never committed any sin? So, Pastor, you see, that's why we, we, we are a little bit worried about you. How can, you know, <laughs> how can we see Jesus in a psalm where Jesus is saying, I, I have sinned? Where David is saying, I have sinned. And Jesus, and the Bible tells us categorically that Jesus did not sin. So, how can we see Jesus there? Can somebody please help me answer, answer that question on Pastor Oz's behalf? Well, he did take upon our sins, right? Pastor. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. He identified with your fallen nature. Mm -hmm. So for him to take it on, he has, the Bible says he became sin. He became sin. So he had to, he had to take it upon himself. So he would call himself a sinner. He called him, he took on sin. The Bible says, for God made him to become sin who knew no sin. He took it upon himself. The Lamb of mm -hmm. God that taketh away, you see, he can't take it away until he takes it on. Because he's the scapegoat who bears it away. Do you get it? So even those <coughs> psalms, yes, even those psalms where it it, it 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 looks like Jesus could not possibly be talking here. Amen. Is this is this Amen. good stuff? Is this is this? Yes. Yes. Is this good? Yes. Like, let me check the I've been playing. I've been playing Psalms twenty three in my head. The Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. So with that one, please That's help good. me. Yeah, because he's the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. So where does Jesus come in? Oh, because Jesus needed God to be his shepherd. At all. He needed God. To, don't you know that before he could become your shepherd, he needed a shepherd. He needed God to be his shepherd first. So in he, fact, and then he was walking through the valley of the shadow of death. What do you think? He had to pass through mm -hmm. death, and, and he needed he God to shepherd. So many. So yes, of yeah. course, he, the Lord was his shepherd too. He, oh, of course. <laughs> he needed the shepherd. It was only because the Lord has shepherded him through that he could now become our shepherd. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. There was nothing that Jesus did that the Father didn't first do because Mm -hmm. he was the express image of the Father. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it was what the Father did for him that he now did for us. Mm-hmm. That and then he's now calling us to do for others. Oh. Oh. So his rod and his stuff comforted him. Therefore, his rod and his stuff comfort us. Comfort us. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Wow. But didn't mm-hmm. Jesus also call himself the good shepherd, Pastor? He did. He did. That's what yeah. we're saying. Yeah. yeah. That it was because God was his good shepherd that he could become a, our good shepherd. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He needed a shepherd too because God had to take him through that valley of the shadow of death. God had mm. to take him through, you know, and God didn't leave his soul in hell. Just in case you think, oh, pastor is making this up. He said, no, you will not leave my So because you will not leave my soul in hell, you. So he, he, somebody is shepherding him. Somebody is leading him out of hell. And he did. Also, um, that Psalm 23, if you look at it as the lamb being led to the slaughter you, you actually yes. see how that sound mm. went, you know he's mm. leading the lamb to the slaughter. Mm. and then you yes. mm. this psalm 16 we talk about this cup this cup is you know it's the same cup oh. as jesus in you see you're reading my cup hey. Benji, please 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 hold it there oh you are okay you are, you are, you are something sweet <laughs> You are hit a sweet spot. Sweet spot. Glory <laughs> to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a sweet spot. Mm. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you. I'm. I'm. Ooh. No, I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I'm so glad you've seen it because. The, <laughs> <laughs> Should we go there? Should we just go there straight away? Because <laughs> yes, Pastor. <laughs> oh, see, um, he Jesus kept on talking to them about the cup. They didn't understand it. Uh-huh. He said, "The cup which my Father has given me to drink, will I not drink it?" <laughs> Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, what did he say? If it were possible, let this cup pass from me. me Mm -hmm. Then he he said, nevertheless, not my will be done. Not Mm -hmm. my will, but yours be done. Then he went back and he prayed and he said, since it is not possible for this cup to pass, your will be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he told his disciples, they can't drink it from the cup he drinks. (laughs) Yes. Mm -hmm. He, he, He said, the hour has come. Should I tell God, deliver me from this thing? He said, but it's for this purpose I came. So I can't tell God to deliver me from this. Mm. this cup. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. Mm. So that cup, that cup, that cup, that cup, that cup. And then by the time you get to the book of Revelation, you see the cup is full of all kinds of vileness. Mm. Mm. He, he, and he had to drink. He had to, mm. he had to mm. drink. You know, he drained it for your sake. Mm. That's why Joseph's uh, Joseph's illustration, when he puts the empty silver cup in Benjamin's sack. Okay. Why Benjamin? Why Benjamin? <laughs> because Benjamin, you see, before Benjamin were 10 brothers. Mm. Then Joseph was number 11. Then Benjamin was 12. Mm. Yeah. Okay? Yep. So... The 10 represent the law. Then grace and truth came through Jesus. And then Benjamin represents the only one who had the same father and mother with Jesus. Hmm. Uh, With Joseph. Joseph. Hmm. Benjamin was the only person who had the same father and mother. And that is a picture of the church. Hmm. The church. We are, we, are, we, we are the only ones who have the same DNA with Jesus. The Lord did it. The Lord couldn't do that. We are the only ones. So what did Joseph do? Joseph now put the empty silver cup at the mouth of his sack to show that the cup had been drained. It had been drunk. Okay. It wasn't a full cup. Somebody had drunk it. Silver <laughs> cup. Silver redemption. Mm. 
it had been drained. Okay. Mm. Mm. Pastor, thank you for for clarifying that because there was, mm -hmm. if you remember, there was a, a time I did the morning prayer on that topic, and mm. I didn't even cover this bit you're talking about now. This is just a revelation to me now. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Belgic, Belgic, just please t tell us more what you what you saw as you were as you you talked about that cup. Tell us a bit more of what you saw. I'm 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 having I'm buffing this little one. <laughs> <laughs> Father who do so what? <laughs> so this is exciting. So all right. So now can you see how? everything points to christ everything whether it is obvious or not obvious whether it is uh um you know and even when it seems to be negative or when it seems that it couldn't possibly be christ you know he <laughs> you can see so um and then because he has drained that cup now, the cup of the iniquity has drunk it and the cup of suffering, mm. now your own cup runs over with goodness. Mm. The lines are falling for you in pleasant places. You now have a goodly inheritance. He, he secured an inheritance by the sufferings. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. So shall we go back to Psalm 16 then? Shall we go back to Psalm 16? I think armed with the information that we have now, I think it will probably be, it will be a lot different now, don't you think? Yes, sir. So now back to the first question I asked, who was speaking? I still think it's David, but it certainly was David. You are right, mm -hmm. Gerald. It certainly was David. It is only it was David. It was it wasn't Jesus that was speaking? It was David? David was speaking, and for you to for how do we know it was David? How do we know? Uh, uh, help me, people, people, people. Very obvious. There's, it's not a trick question. How do we know it was David? He says a mixed term of David. He says so. He says it's a mixed term of David. That's one. It's not a trick question. He says this is a mixed term of David. There are some terms that are not attributed to anybody. There are some terms that we don't know who wrote them. You know, some it will say it's Asaph. Some it will say the sons of Korah. Some it will tell you who, who you know, uh, Ethan and all that. But this one, it says it's a mixed term of David, of David. And then yeah. somebody else, please help me. How do I know it was David again? Apart from, I, I, I need you, I need evidence at the mouth of two or three witnesses. How do I know that it was David? Well, Pastor, I'll try. Because the, the very first one, he's, he's telling us that he has put his trust in him. Mm. That's what I think. No, I, I, I want what I want is I want evidence from somewhere else in the scripture. That's why. That's what I. Oh, that's, okay. Ah, that's, okay. That's what I, I want. I want evidence. Oh, the same old one, number six, because the lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. Okay, I, I want something from outside of Psalm sixteen. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, let's go to Acts chapter two, verse twenty-seven. Let's go there. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Acts 2. 27. 27. Now, who, who, who's, who's speaking here? For you to understand, you need to go back to verse 14. It says, but Peter standing up with the 11. Okay. So these are the 12 disciples. Um, but Pastor, uh, 
Judas was dead now, so how come there are 12? No, we know the answer. Help me, somebody. Yeah. Eh? Um, Pastor, we know this one now. We know the answer. Uh, tell me, tell me. If, since you know it, tell me. <laughs> yeah. They prayed the answer was name. Was it another, another one that was added? Tell me, tell me. I, I, Matthias, I can't hear you. Said it, no, Matthias was that then. Matthias replaced Judas. Yes, Matthias replaced okay. Judas. Matthias yeah. replaced uh, Judas. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's not a trick question. I just, I need, I'm just asking you that. <laughs> you see, it's because said, but Peter standing up with the 11. You see, God is very deliberate in the choice of words. He didn't say with the 10. You see, because Matthias in chapter one, at the end of chapter one, Matthias had replaced Judas. So there were still 12 because they, 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 they have to be 12. It, 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 it was very important because those 12 were a mirror of the sons of, Joseph, of, of Jacob in the Old Testament. Mm. All right. That's why there's no woman amongst them. It's not because God doesn't like women or, or God is, is not a feminist or anything. That's not why. It's because the 12 disciples were a reflection of the 12 sons of, Joseph, of Jacob. All right, so it, it, you can see that it was very important that there they were there were twelve they, those twelve. So one was was take, I, 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 um, drafted in to replace Judas. Okay, all right. So uh, um, he lifted up his voice and said unto them, "You men of Judah and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as you suppose, since it's just the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is that which was spoken. This is that." That's another day's message. This is that. <laughs> this is that. Not this will be that. Not this was that. This is that. So it has it is a fulfillment. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass in the last day, said the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and my handmaids will I pour out in my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 22. All right? Ye men of Israel, you see what we're doing? This is context. We're looking at things within their context. Because we normally we just go straight to the scripture in verse 27. But if you don't know what preceded it, you can be confused. Or people can confuse you. Uh, verse 22. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know, verse 23, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. It wasn't possible for death to hold him down. Now, why? Somebody tell me, why was it not possible for death to hold Jesus down in hell? Why wasn't it possible? Because he has the power over... Um, he has the power over death. No, 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 no. That's not the reason. He had that power. He, he had yeah. it. Too. But he had it before he came from heaven. So why... But well, why is it that death could not hold him down now? Why, why, why was it that death couldn't hold him down now? Because there was no sin in him. Sin oh, was thank death. you, Tabna. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. The wages of sin is death. Yes. And there was no sin in him. So he was only, he, he only took upon himself our sins. And when the penalty for sin was paid, and because he had not sinned, death could mm -hmm. not hold on to him. Mm -hmm. Are we getting this? Is, is this is this is this yes, becoming yes. clearer? Yes, sir. This is yes, what sir. these are the things that are most clearly, most definitely mm -hmm. believed amongst us. This is our faith. This is these are the foundations mm -hmm. of our faith. These are the things that we believe. Okay. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. Um, well. Where, where am I? What verse am I on? 26, 25. 25, you're going into 20. Yeah. 
No, I, I, wait, where is this? Say, wait. Before. Oh, okay, verse 24 says, yeah, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that it should be. Now, listen to verse 25. This is where I, I, I was asking for evidence that David was speaking, but that he was talking about Christ. And that if Christ had been explaining that psalm to them, he would have shown them that that psalm was talking about him. That the only reason he inspired David to write it was because David's experience was going to mm. picture what he was going to go through. Mm. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. So now verse 25. For David speaketh concerning him, mm. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he's on mm. my right hand that I should mm. not be moved. Now that's another psalm. We are going to come to that. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue were glad. Moreover, also, my flesh shall rest in hope. Where have you seen that before? Where, where have you seen that before, people of God? My flesh shall rest in hope. Where have you seen that before? Where have you seen that old verse? My heart is glad, my glory rejoice, my flesh also shall rest in hope. It's not the Psalm 16. Psalm 16, verse 9. Okay, so he's quoting now Psalm 16, verse 9. Peter is quoting Psalm 16, verse 9. Okay? Mm-hmm. Are you with me, people? Yes, sir. It's yes, very sir. important. To, I, need you to, I need you to stay with me. Eh? I need you to stay with me, okay? Uh, Therefore did my heart rejoice. So, Acts 2.26 is quoting Psalm 16, verse 9. Okay? Therefore did my heart rejoice and my, my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Then, verse 27 is quoting verse 10. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will you suffer your holy one to see corruption. All right? Are you getting it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then verse 26, say, verse 28 says, Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. That, you see, it is because God made known to Jesus the ways of life that he became the way, the truth, and the life. He became the way of life. Okay? Because God had shown him the ways, all of it. So he encapsulates the way of life. Amen? Amen. Mm. Um, so thou hast made known to me the ways of life thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance now listen to Peter explaining what David quote what David wrote listen to Peter's explanation men and brethren let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. So David's sepulchre, they knew where it was. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of his fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He seen this before, so he saw it in the spirit, speak of the resurrection of Christ. Hmm? Mm-hmm. So, David was not talking about himself when he was writing verses 9 and 10. He was talking prophetically about the resurrection of Christ. How do I know that? How do I know that, people? <laughs> verse 30 then pastor isn't it eh? it says therefore being it's a prophet and knowing that God has verse 31 says so 31 says it, it so is not saying. a trick question I mean, <laughs> when I ask these questions I say how do I know that he was speaking prophetically pastor, pastor we know it's not a trick question but mm-hmm. I think it's because we know it's there so we don't answer you oh no but it's <laughs> If you know it's there, you are not answering, then I don't know that you know it. <laughs> so you, you, when I ask that question, you say, oh, it is written there that D- 
David being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath that he wouldn't, that he would raise up Christ. So he, seen this before, spoke of the resurrection of Christ. So he mm -hmm. saw it prophetically. It was a prophetic insight. God gave him a vision of the resurrection of Christ. So he spoke it, okay? That his soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus, verse 32, has God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he had shed forth this which you now see and hear. Now, verse 34, he's telling you that verse 9 and 10 could not have been David. How do I know that? Because he said, For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. So he's saying that he wasn't talking about David. Those things were not talking about David because David suffered. We, we can see his tomb here. So he, he did, he, he suffered corruption. He decayed. But the person that was speaking was saying, I will rest in hope because you will not suffer my soul to see corruption. You will not leave your, my soul in hell. You will not suffer your Holy One to see corruption. Now, this also helps me tremendously because I realized that Jesus also had to have faith. He had to have faith. He had to trust that God was not going to leave him in hell. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing is that nobody had ever been, hell had never released its captives before. So mm -hmm. when God told Jesus that he wasn't going to leave him there, and Jesus submitted to it, Jesus had to submit by faith. And it was, so he, while he was waiting for the three days and three nights, Jesus was also waiting in hope. Faith is the substance mm. of things oh, hoped yes, yes. for. So he was hoping that God would raise him from the dead. So Jesus had to operate in faith. So when he calls you to operate in faith, he is not calling you to do something that he did not Amen. have to do. Now, Amen. your faith has not taken you to hell where you are to rise from hell. So, so anything else that he asks you to do, he has done the very worst, which is be raised from hell and he had to believe he had to have hope he had to have the faith which is the substance of what he hoped for that god wouldn't leave him there and because he had that faith god honored his faith and raised him from the dead hallelujah amen, amen. Whew. this is this is it's <laughs> simple stuff but it's deep stuff too Mm. It's deep. Mm. So I think we're going to have to stop here for to today and we'll pick it up from next week. So now that I've given you all the keys, I've given you the keys, you can freely enter into the palace now and go into mm -hmm. every room and, and, and look into the treasures that are there. Mm. So we will continue next week. We'll continue with the Psalm 16. Then maybe we'll now go to Psalm 40. Okay, in closing, I just want three, four, five people to tell me what they have, what they have learned today, what they are taking away from this uh, Bible study today, what you are taking away. And of course, because you are taking away, you are going to meditate on it, think about it, read it some more, so that it will settle in your spirit. So that when somebody now asks you a question, you will know what you believe. So I want three, four, five people to just tell me in a couple of sentences what they have picked up from today's. Well, Pastor, for me, all scriptures point to Christ. And that's yeah. Luke 24, 27. Yeah. He said that. Okay. Could, yeah, could, even though could it be that that's, could it be that that scripture is not actually saying that? That is just saying only the scriptures that point to Christ point to Him. Could could that be? Could that be a possibility? Not when it it, 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 it categorically states that He expounded what He was saying. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to make sure that we, I, I, I'm not, um, that we understand or that, I'm, I'm convinced that, that we're not mis, misreading or misinterpreting the scripture. Yeah. 
Okay, no, mm -hmm. I, I'm convinced that. Sorry. That, no, I said I am convinced that it says that the scriptures point to him because it says here categorically. The beginning okay. of the road, right. they explain to them. All right. What Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, so that's one of our takeaways that the scriptures all point to Jesus. Yeah. Okay. So that's takeaway number one. Okay. Uh, when I go to India, they usually have about eight things, you know, in my in my uh, uh, takeaway board. <laughs> yeah. There's the there's the there's the naan, then there's the rice. So, so they will write one sauce. of eight, two of eight, three of eight. Mm. <laughs> I, I mean, we. I mean, you always you're teaching us, so we always you've always told us, and we know that um, there's nothing that we experience that he hasn't he hasn't like gone through himself. So for me, this going through what we you said this evening, it's just really reinforcing that and highlight highlights it even further that there's nothing that he he's asking us to go through or do or if we are presented with that he hasn't already been through so when he said he feels our affliction he he's carried this so it's just yeah this is just making it even more we have clearer. a high priest who's not untouched well, by the touched by it. yes exactly mm. yeah so there's nothing that yeah like Thanks, he said he had to, he had he had to have he, he, had, he had to have faith i never thought of that <laughs> so, yeah mm. because god could have forgotten him yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> if, exactly if we if god if was god, if god was god able forgets, to uh, exactly if kind exactly, of gods exactly that so forget what we, what we're that going through things and think he would deceive jesus into hell and leave him there exactly yeah. so if what we think of ourselves and think that god has forgotten us so that's exactly why that can be possible because he never forgets. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. With Jero, if we've got two, so number three, yes. Ah, come on, guys. After all that, I've, <laughs> I'm even sweating and I've, I, I mean, my, my throat is dry and you look, it's only two things you got out of it. Ah, no. Pastor, I think for me it's where I know you said sometimes we have to hear it eight times for it to. But I don't think I think from after today this one has definitely stuck with me. The fact that he he took them back to Moses right through to you know the prophets you know just at each stage pointing them to himself right from the beginning right from Genesis yeah. you know point that this is me, this is me in this chapter, this is me in that chapter. So yeah. that, that really stuck with me. I know we've covered it in the past, but hearing it again today, it, 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 it makes a lot more sense, you know, than before to me. Okay, thanks, Sister Carol. So that's three of eight, very good. <laughs> so we've got the naan bread now, we've got the rice. <laughs> <laughs> so we want the curry now. We want the curry. <laughs> but so the faith bit really, can I say, strengthens my faith? Because I mean, he was the son of God, and in as much as he was taking on our sins, which we we love to talk about, and we are very appreciative of it, there could still have been the chance that he. Could have been left down there, <laughs> and and yeah. understanding that today gives me a lot of um, I don't know it heightens my everything else, my faith, my hope, and all that. He trusted, so it, it makes me want to even trust more. That's yeah. what I am I'm taking from it today. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. I think it's it's just very encouraging to know that Jesus had to do the things that he calls us to do. Yeah. So when he says yeah. you should trust God, he had to trust God. Trust, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And it was That's a good thing, said. considering that nobody had come back from the dead, you know? Yeah. He could have gotten yeah. there and then the rules would have changed. Then what? Yeah. You lose your kingdom and all the nice things to be under there with all yeah. those yeah. Wow. Oh. 
I don't think if you sell Prince Charles to go to Abuja, he'll go, not even for one minute, go and sleep there. Or in my country, Nima, he won't go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay, well, good. Uh, what with me was the fact that uh, the grave could not hold, death could not hold Jesus captive. Uh, uh, uh. That's not the same. Mm. That's very good. was paid, yes. That's it. That's very good. Very good, mm. yes. And one of the reasons why we should not be afraid to die. Yeah. Because this world is full of sin. We're existing where there's sin. Yeah. That's why death they has this hold. Can do, you know, death can happen. When we live where there's no sin, then yeah. there's nothing like death. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11 or so, where it says that he, he will deliver us who through all our lifetime were subject to the fear of death. Mm, mm. We have been delivered from the fear mm, of death. We don't mm. need to be afraid. Mm. To live is Christ, to, to die is gain. To be absent mm. from the body is to be present with the Lord. Mm. There's nothing to fear. Mm. Mm. All right, very good. I think we're on six of eight. We just need another two and then we, we would have, we'll be done. I think for me, it's the fact that um, the we could get a, um, a clearer picture of what was happening in, in Psalm 16 from Acts um, 2. Yeah. Um, we could use another, another scripture was confirming or explaining or, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, Mamio. That's true because it's, it's, it's like I said, the things that were happening physically any uh, uh, there were normal things so unless you saw unless you could see with the eyes of the spirit you wouldn't know what was happening in the spirit so it's very interesting that god now begins to show us it's like he takes us to this you know when you're watching a movie and you you you, you are seeing everything you are seeing is just on something then they now take you to behind the, the making of the movie Mm. So you now find out what was behind. That when they, you see that wall, it's just a facade. There's nothing behind it. <laughs> <laughs> so you go and you are seeing, or you are seeing uh, how this thing was was done. How was how how did they how did they uh, achieve it? Mm. So yes, thanks, mm. Mamio. That's that's very important. That Peter that's God a- uses Peter to to help us to understand what was going on in Psalm 16, the explanation. Yes. How did you how did you see? How did you see from how, how, <laughs> how did, did you see, see how did you see from, from Psalm 16 to Art? <laughs> how did you see? Because it was when you thought when we, we got to Art and you were still reading you were still on 20 something. I was reading that and I, I asked for 25. David said I said ah this is what mm-hmm. I was asking. But how did you do the connection? Because the Bible mm-hmm. is do you understand? Yeah. I finish yeah. one yeah. that's why I remember that is connected. I, I, I was even thinking, uh, uh, what's the Dan Brown's one? Uh, Dan Brown's movie, that one. I was thinking, oh my God, this thing looks like a very big puzzle and you can only solve it by actually going on your knees because you can't study numerology, you can't do theology, you just don't have the key. How, how do you see all this connection? Yeah. Well, well uh, the thing is, that's why you have to read your Bible. That's why you have to study. You see, you, there's no substitute for reading the Bible. No substitute. You, you see, you, 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 when you hear Tunji talking, you know, you, you understand how important it is because he sees connections. He sees connections. Mm-hmm. He'll be reading something and he'll just immediately tell you, this is what I saw. So you, that's how we read. We read with a view to seeing connections. You must be seeing the connections. How does it, I, I, one of the ways why I see things is I ask a lot of questions, like I do here now. Before I come and ask you guys the question, I've asked myself the question, I've asked the Holy Spirit the question. Sometimes I've asked, I've, I've looked in the Bible, I'm checking, I'm, uh, sometimes I've looked at many commentaries. I'm saying, what, if, what does this phrase mean? What does this sentence mean? Why did God say it? Why did he say Peter stood up and spoke to the eleven? Peter with the other 11 spoke to why, why, you know, I asked myself those questions and once I'm able to get the answers, then I see the connections. Sometimes it, that's when I see the connection. And then sometimes you have to have um, a game 
I, I always tell you guys about a good having a good uh, study Bible. If you if you have a, um, your uh, paper Bible, you find that when you are reading those verses, there will be references to other okay. verses. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So sometimes you will see they will show you a connection that you would not normally have seen by yourself. Mm. Sometimes you see. Mm. At other times, you will see a connection, and then then they will confirm that co connection. You know. But this one, because it's very, it's a very obvious one, because uh, this uh, Peter is actually quoting from Psalm 16. He's quoting it verbatim. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it becomes very clear that that's what he's talking about because he's quoting it, you know? Huh. And then, like I said, if you look at, you see that he quotes Psalm 110 verse one, two. He quotes a few other, uh, verse, other Psalms, you know? So you can see, Again, which is why I'm telling you that every psalm is messianic because it quotes copiously from the psalms. Pastor, yeah. Okay. Pastor, there's one, something also that just sort of um, resonated with me. The fact that, you know, when we talk about uh, no prophecy of the scripture becomes a matter of someone's own interpretation. Because it That's started right. asking us who wrote it. We were saying David, uh, we were saying Jesus. We were saying, but if you look at when you brought in the Acts 20, Acts 2, it just it literally showed us who, who yeah, was saying it. Yeah, who wrote it, who exactly. Was it, and what mm -hmm. it, it's you know, it's not what I think or what Tim thinks or what. Exactly. Yeah, yeah the word it, is. You know, you, you know, I always do that with you guys. I always say, so how did you get? You say, oh, I think it was somebody else talking. I say, how? How did you? I don't want you to just tell me you think, and I don't want you to just mm -hmm. as you. You have to have evidence that this is. So now, if you go somewhere and say, David wrote Psalm 16, you can say it. Say, how do you know? You say, first of all, it says mm -hmm. it's a miktam of David. And then Jesus, who is Lord, tells us that, he, he, you know, it, 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 it was David that wrote it. Peter quotes it and tells us mm -hmm. that it was David mm -hmm. that wrote it. So, uh, you know, there are some very difficult things to believe in the scriptures. For example, as an unbeliever, if, if you are told that somebody's wife became a pillar of salt, you would say, ah, uh, ah. Uh. But you know why I believe that? Because Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so if Jesus believed it mm. <laughs> and referred to it, uh, then, uh, and, and if you like, go on, uh, me, I believe it. I'm holding on to it, full stop. We have to stop now. We have to stop. So we'll continue next week. We'll continue next week. We did it. So eight out of eight everybody so. put bookmark on where we are. Yeah, so hmm. we did though. Ah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> very good students. <laughs> very good students. Very, very good. Very good. So please, everybody, mark mark where we are, and then so that when we come in next week, because I'm going to ask you. You know, I'm going to ask. You know, I'm going to ask you. What did we talk about last week? Mm -hmm. Give me the eight, eight points that we we took away. I'm going to ask you. So your best bet is to have written it down now so that you can, you have expo. So when we get there next week, you just open. I mean, Nadia is fantastic with that. She, 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 will, she will tell you verbatim everything. She's very good with that. <laughs> so that's a good student. So you have to be good students like that too. So, okay. All right. Uh, it's time to just give our, our love seeds that we want to say thank you to God with. Um, um, and then let's let's close uh, uh let, let me pray for you as i send you forth father thank you for another time but well, thank you for this very simple revelation but very deep mm -hmm. thank you for opening our eyes to things that we may have glossed over and thank you for the fact that hmm, jesus was a person of faith no wonder the bible says have faith in God. And another translation says, have the God kind of faith. God himself operates in faith. Jesus operates in faith. So we have no choice. We are people of faith. We were birthed in faith. We, are, we walk in faith. We are sustained by faith. And faith comes by hearing the message of Christ, which we have heard today clearly. We have seen how Jesus dealt with hell and how hell could not hold him down. 
It was impossible, the Bible says, for death to, 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 to retain him. And so we thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Uh, because it couldn't hold him, it can't hold us. <laughs> uh, because we're in him. Thank you, Lord, because the lines. Now we understand what it means when you say the lines are falling for us in pleasant places. The measuring rod has, has apportioned to us pleasant lands and pleasant yes, things. Yes, we have a goodly heritage. Yes, this, is our, this is our portion. And for this, we are grateful. And we can only thank you, Father, because it is all through Jesus that all of this is made possible. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Our Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you, you, you paid the price. Thank you that you went where we could not go. Thank you because you did what we could not do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. To the glory of the Father, we say thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.